This is a 486 SBC system. Today, we're going to do a brief overview of it. Let's get started. You may have never heard of an SBC before, and I don't blame you. It was a pretty obscure industrial PC standard in the 90s, and basically stood for single board computer. They were widely used in industrial environments since they could easily be switched out in the event of a fault. This particular SBC model I happen to have here is a 486 one, but you can also get anything from a 386 right up to a Pentium 3. This little expansion card looking thing basically has all the functionality of a regular 486 motherboard crammed into one tiny package. My particular 486 SBC model happens to support the latest SIM memory sticks less commonly found on 486 motherboards. I'm running 32 megabytes here. It also has a 169 pin socket which fits the vast majority of 486 CPU models. This particular unit has an AM486DX4100 CPU so it's quite a late model 486 SBC for sure. I've also got 128 kilobytes of cache installed. You may be asking yourself, how do you go about using one of these things? Well, this is the answer, an ISA backplane. It's basically just a tiny motherboard with no functionality, only ISA slots. And it also has a power connector on it which is how we go about powering the SBC. The SBC is really the heart of the computer. Think of this as just a riser card with power. We have a few different methods to power the ISA backplane, but the easiest by far is probably just to use a standard AT power connector. So that's what we'll be doing here. I'm also using an AT to ATX power converter, so I'll go ahead and plug it into my ATX power supply here. At this point we can go ahead and insert the SBC into the backplane, just like that. Before we can power anything up, we need to install a few more cards, starting with the sound card. I'm just using a basic Sound Blaster 16 here, since it's the only card that will fit and doesn't go past the RAM slots. Next I'll install a basic VGA ISA video card. Well at this point we've basically got a 486 brick. An entire 486 computer is here. How cool is that? That's pretty tiny if you ask me. Something notable about the board is that it has onboard IDE and floppy controllers which means we can go ahead and plug in a standard hard drive. Going ahead and powering up the SBC, we can see it stems to life straight away. And yeah, we've got a pretty nice looking BIOS. It's one of those early 90s block ones. The first thing we need to do is go ahead and auto detect the hard drive. This BIOS makes that really easy. And once we've done that, I'll go ahead and save the changes and exit. We should be able to boot into DOS at this point. But hey, would you look at that? It appears it wants us to go into the BIOS again. Let's check if it's retained our settings, even after a simple save and exit, which causes the computer to reboot. And as we can see, it's not saving settings. Oh no. Clearly, we have a bad Dallas RTC clock chip on our hands, which is soldered directly into the motherboard. I have no idea why it's not saving settings past a reboot, but my best guess is that the battery is so dead that it doesn't even save whatsoever. This is a weird problem nonetheless. 
We're basically stuck in a loop of reboots at this point, so there's no way we're going to be able to mess with this in some DOS games. This is an ongoing series though, and I would like to eventually build a whole tiny 486 computer, so maybe I'll see about tracking down the problem and fixing it in a later video. But I think for now I'm going to have to leave it about there. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview, and I'll see you next time.